Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. And today I'd like to go over something I haven't really talked about in a long time. I know I've lately I've been doing a lot of like bed bugs and cockroaches and trying to explain to people how to do their own pest control. And I wanna go over essential oils. Now this is something I haven't talked about in a long time. I think I've only done maybe one or two videos about them, but it's, it's very important to understand that essential oils are toxic. Now you can tell by the title of this video, it may get a couple of people up riled or upset or irritated with me, but I wanna to explain to you why essential oils are toxic and why you should really think about not using essential oils for pest control. Now, a lot of people, now I've, I've had people stating on my videos, uh, they go in and they talk about how I don't know what I'm talking about and how essential oils are actually uh, really beneficial and they help them do X, Y, Z. They help whatever, you know, whatever reason they give as to why they are effective. Um, and I understand that some people may have had success, but here's the issue with essential oils. A lot of people that use them, that brag on them, that want to sell them, or they may just want you to try them because it worked for them. I want you to understand that essential oils are toxic. The reason essential oils are toxic, now what makes, what makes something toxic? All right, if I go out and I spray for bugs and I use chemicals in your home, you know, the industry nowadays, because of the essential oil movement, they all call it product but I call them chemicals because that's what they are. They're pesticides. All right, if I come in your home and I spray pesticides, evil pesticides, uh, they're gonna kill the bugs. They are toxic because they kill insects. Insects crawl through them, they die, no more bugs. All right, people will use the, the phrase that, oh, well, if that kills a bug, I'd hate to see what it does to me as if a human and an insect are the same. I am not the same as an insect. I am warm-blooded. I do not have an exoskeleton. There are lots of things about a human being that make you a completely different creature than an insect. And there are gonna need to be different pesticides, I mean different pesticides, different chemicals. There are different chemicals that will harm a human, but they will not harm bugs. There are chemicals that harm bugs that do not harm humans. All right, that's something you need to understand. And I know a lot of people are like, well, if it kills a bug, it must be toxic to me, but that's actually not true. Um, it's like saying someone without a peanut allergy, because my child has a peanut allergy and they eat peanuts and they break out and they have anaphylactic shock and they have all these horrible things happen to them, that that's gonna happen to you if you eat a peanut. It's, it doesn't work that way. It, it's not, that's not how it works. So a lot of, now there are some pesticides on the market that are cholinesterase inhibitors. Cholinesterase, I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit of science here and I'm gonna get to the point. Cholinesterase is a chemical that flows between the nerve synapse, all right? So your synapses are, are like a, they, they hover like this. So you have electric impulses that will jump back and forth and back and forth between those synapses because of the cholinesterase that flows between them. It's a, it's a chemical in your body that your body produces. Um, without that chemical, the nerves shut down and they cease to function. Humans have cholinesterase. Bugs have cholinesterase. That chemical is somewhat toxic to humans. Um, there are a lot of pesticides nowadays that have come out like the neonicotinoid family that don't, that aren't cholinesterase inhibitors at all. In fact, most of them attack a part of the nervous system mammals don't even possess. So to say that because it killed a termite or because it killed an ant or because it killed whatever, a bed bug or whatever, um, it must harm me is actually not true. Pesticides have come a long, long way in science and research. Uh, they're actually not as harmful as people would like to have you believe. Um, every pesticide is given what they call an LD50 value. So let's use the number 100. If you have 100 squirrels and you give 100 squirrels enough concentrate, now this is not mixed, it's not diluted, it's concentrated chemical. If you give so much concentrated chemical to a squirrel and it kills 50% of the, 
of the population. Now they've all been given the same amount. So let's say it's an ounce or two ounces of concentrate. You give every single squirrel two ounces of concentrate. The squirrels that survive, now 50% of them die, but 50% of them don't die. And the reason they don't die, maybe they're a little more immune to it or whatever, but that's, that's the way that they do the test. The 50% that survive off of most pesticides actually get over the chemical, their body rejects the chemical, pushes it out, and they do not die. They get completely better as if they were never given the chemical ever. A lot of things have changed. It's not the day of chloridane anymore. We don't have chloridane. We don't have a lot of these chemicals that build up in the system. Actually, chloridane will eliminate itself as well. You, you, your body will eventually eliminate that too. But the point is, is that essential oils are toxic. This is what the whole video is about. Essential oils are toxic. All right, essential oils kill things. People say, I used it in, I used cinnamon oil, or I used peppermint oil, or I used whatever oil, and it killed this bug, or it killed that bug, or I got rid of my ants with peppermint. You know, this is something that people do. They take these oils. Now, these are highly concentrated oils. This is one of the ways that they sell essential oils to you, is they'll tell you, we took a dump truck load of peppermint leaves and we squished them all down. And then this little bitty vial, that's how many peppermint leaves you have. You know, it's extremely concentrated. It's not natural. You know, a five gallon bucket of peppermint oil leaves or peppermint leaves or whatever, those don't occur naturally in the environment. You know, they're not a natural thing. They may be made from natural products, but the end result is not a natural thing. You know, it's it's like taking salt and adding it to whatever, and, and you can change the chemical makeup of something just by adding salt to it because salt is sodium chloride. So that the thing is, you can you can break things down with natural chemicals that occur naturally in the environment. You have to look at a peppermint oil or a, or a uh, coconut oil, not coconut oil, peppermint oil or a... Um, cinnamon oil or something like that, the essential oils, you have to look at them as a chemical and they should be treated like a chemical. You should have respect for them just like pesticides. And the problem with essential oils is there's no research. All the research done is by the person that's trying to sell it to you. All right, if I'm trying to sell you a product I'm not going to tell you all the bad things that could happen. I'm only going to tell you all the good things, and half of them could be made up because there's no science backing the use of essential oils. That's one of the problems. There's no regulation. There's no uh, you know, EPA standard. There's, there's nothing like that. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're just all in for government and stuff. But you know, the thing is, the EPA does some good. They do protect you from a lot of things that could harm you. Uh, as far as chemicals and, and, and pesticides and other things. You know, they're not in the essential oil market. You don't have Food and Drug Administration. You don't have the EPA. You don't have them telling you, yes, this has been studied thousands of times. We know because it's been used on thousands of different breeds of animals. Like you've got mice, rats, rabbits, dogs, cats, all these animals that the chemical has been used on they don't do that with essential oils. In fact, a lot of them will brag and say, this has never been used on pets. This has never been used on animals, ever. Well, how do you know how it's gonna to react to your pet if it's never been used on an animal? If I spray a chemical in your house that's been used on cats and dogs in a lab somewhere, you know, they're gonna kill them anyway, they're strays. And I, I know that's a big thing. You know, some people believe in it, some people don't. but. How do you think I know that it's safe for your pet? How do you think I know it's not going to hurt your cat or it's not going to hurt your dog? Because it's been used on cats and dogs before. And they know how much of it it takes to kill a cat or a dog. So they know it's safe to use in your home. So hopefully this video has been informative. I really hope so. It's, it's, I've had all these people commenting on my videos and they call me Mr. Monsanto and all these crazy things. But the truth is I'm just here to help. I'm honestly, I just want people to do things right. Go look at my channel, subscribe to me, like my videos, dislike my videos. You know, if you don't like it, tell me in the comments below. Tell me if I'm wrong, you know, point out where I'm wrong. I like to change. I don't mind uh, being told where I'm right, where I'm wrong, whatever. 
but go look at my other videos. I've got over 100 videos on my channel, how to do this, how to do that. You know, I don't mind helping people. I, I like to help people. This is what I got in business for. Um, hopefully, this has been beneficial to you. If so, please leave a like. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to do a few more uploads. Uh, my son was born three months ago today. Today's the 15th. He was born October 15th. And so I've, I've been kind of really lax on my videos. Haven't had a whole lot of time. Hopefully I can remedy that uh, in the next few weeks. But you guys have a really great day. My microwave is beeping. I got some food I'm going to go eat. So you guys, talk to you later. Thanks.